Good morning, Mount Vernon. I greet you this morning in the grand and glorious name of Jesus our Christ. I am so happy to see you here this morning and I need, to know, need you to know that I, I look forward each Sunday morning to seeing you. Those who are worshiping online, we thank God for you. We ask now, my brothers and sisters, that we gather our wandering thoughts and now get ready to worship. Our choir has already ushered us in. Deacon has already ushered us in um, to worship. There are some things I want to put on your minds. Um, first, my brothers and sisters, I want to remind you to, and, and, and remind you and thank those of you who are active participants in our online Bible study and our online prayer line, amen? Uh, for me, they serve as fuel. I, I don't often make my presence known on the prayer line, but sometimes I'm just there hearing what, what you are praying for and praying with you while you're praying. So I, I ask you to continue to participate in those things, but there's something I want to say to you this morning. Those of you who are here, and I feel like, I, and those of you who are listening online, viewing online, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, to the people who are here, um, because I want to talk about uh, the absence of our children. Yeah, the absence of our children. You know, with all that is going on today that, that directly affects our children. Mount Vernon, I just think, parents, I just think, uh, guardians, I just think our children need to be active participants in the programs of this church. Amen. 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 They're going to need some godly foundation. Our children are operating in an area none of us have ever had to operate before. Everywhere you turn, they are being preyed upon. And, 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 you know, there was a time they were being preyed upon uh, psychologically and mentally. Uh, now they're being preyed upon physically in churches, in schools, all of these places. Help us help you raise your child. Amen? Uh, now, I, I could go on to say, you know, the same, con same contaminant that's in the school might show up at the church, but you send them to school. But I'm not going to say that because it's going to sound like I'm fussing. I could say that, you know, they're going to go away to summer camp and the same contagion that's at summer camp might show up at, but I'm not going to say that because I don't want to sound like I'm fussing. I hope that our children are not absent from worship because parents, you have found it convenient for you to worship online. I want you to stay safe, but I'm concerned about the souls of our children. I say that this morning with so many of our young people in worship. Uh, KK, stand up, sweetheart. You are an Aggie. In, in your second year? Going into your second year, yes. Now, and, and for those of you who don't want to make physical contact with milk money, she'll give you her cash app. Amen. Come now, my brothers and sisters. Let's enter into worship with our call to worship this morning. Let's stand, please. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and amen. Let's continue to stand and sing our congregational hymn this morning, To God Be the Glory. Let's raise our voices. Make that this morning your affirmation. To God be the glory. Yes. Great things, so love be the 
the world that he gave his son who yielded his life and atonement and opened Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people oh, come to the Father through Jesus and give him the glory. the purchase to every believer the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Let the people oh, come to the Father through Jesus. Give him the glory. Great things he has taught us. Great things. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But pure and higher will be our wonder, our rapture. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Let the people all oh, come to the Father through Jesus and give him the glory. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Let the people Rejoice, oh come. Give him the glory. Amen. My brothers and sisters, would you continue to stand and welcome each other into worship? Our guests who are worshiping here with us this morning, just take a moment to blow them a kiss, give them a hug or something. Welcome here. Welcome here. Place of Mount Vernon is a place of love. Blessed from above. We want to take some time to welcome you. Mount Vernon is a place of love. Blessed. We want Welcome here. Welcome here. Good morning, Mount Vernon. Go to God in prayer with me. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for a, a space to worship you. We thank you, God, for those who are watching and listening abroad. 
We thank you, God, that you are here. You're in the midst of where your people are. I pray, God, that today our ears are open to what you have to say to us, to our families, to us as a congregation. I pray, God, that the power of your spirit moves through us in the things that we do once we leave here. Have your way in this place. Lord, continue to bless Pastor Washington and Mount Vernon Baptist Church as we serve your community You're in this state, in this nation. I pray, God, that you continue to give us fresh word, a fresh word for our souls. We also want to ask that you consecrate the giving on today, the, sacri the monetary sacrifices that members and guests give. May it be used for the building of your kingdom. We thank you for all of this and all the things that you will do. do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today's reading is Psalm 27. We're reading from King James Version, verses 7 through 12. Psalm 27, verses 7 through 12. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, but put thy servant away. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over into the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I'm gonna read verse eight again. When thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart saith unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Blessed is the word of God for God's people, amen. Praise the Lord, church. There are times we stand alone.
like that. That sounds good. Let's, um, let's give the Mount Vernon Woman's Ensemble. <laughs> ah, yeah. Thank God for these faithful souls, these faithful voices that come out. This morning, from the passage of scripture that was just read, let me lift up verse 8 again. Look at it. Think about it. Focus on it. When thou sayest, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. And so this morning, seeking God's face. Seeking God's face. We gather here this morning in person or online or uh, on the virtual platform, counted among, I want you to hear me this morning, counted among the blessed and spared. Uh, I thought I'd get a bigger amen than that, but. Uh, I need those who've been blessed and spared to say amen. amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all thinking persons need to do is just look around. And, and you'll be sure to acknowledge that, that God is good and God has been good. And, and we're trusting him to be good in the future. Look at how much our world has changed. Uh, we, we are now measuring our, our days by pre-COVID and post-COVID and uh, what the new normal is going to be like. We, we're now saying, well, before COVID this, before COVID that, uh, I, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you can tell me where you were when it hit you. And we are in a pandemic. When you realize, you know, you know, you know, uh, we're in a pandemic. Not uh, where you were. I, I remember, I remember those of you who were on the call uh, that, that, that Saturday evening with the health team educating me about the viciousness of this pandemic. I didn't know any better. I, 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 I'm not a healthcare person, you know. Um, but I, I remember one of our members cautiously talking, but I heard the fear in her voice. And I said, well, let's do it. And then I had to reprogram myself. I said, well, you know, uh, just, just treat this like a snow day. You know, snow is coming. You, 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 you shut down for people's safety. And, and God knows I didn't know we were going to have a two-year snow day. But, but um, not just this pandemic now, but this, this matter of school violence. Street violence, supply chain shortages. I, 
I'm going to the grocery store looking for common things and can't find them now. Baby formula. I had to ask one of the healthcare people about this matter of baby formula because, you know, I'm, I'm country. You just get some carnation and some carol syrup. That's what we did in the backwoods of Louisiana, you know. Uh, the house was never without carol syrup. And you never use, in my house, you never use carol syrup for anything else. I asked the healthcare person because I was trying to find a side hustle. You know, just mix up some pet milk, and carnation, and carol syrup, and just stand in front of Mount Vernon Baptist Church selling blessed baby formula. Yeah. You ought to see all the nurses in here going, <laughs> I, I see y'all. <laughs> Supply chain, gas, good Lord, gas prices. These are times when, when, when things ought to trouble you. But you know, I'm looking around at folk who are acting like everything's all right. But these are troubling times they and take courage take courage don't 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 lose heart uh, because god's people are, are 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 at their best and the church of jesus christ is at her best in troubled times you don't think god's people are doing great things now i, I looked at the phone I'm going to call her out. I looked at the phone just now and saw our own Maya Reed online in another part of the country. The gospel in this pandemic, the gospel has been able to go from Mount Vernon Baptist Church into places it never went before. And David this morning, David this morning gives us instructions on, on how to live through troubled times. David says, seek God. In troubled times, seek God. In troubled times, tr uh, troubled, time, troubled times uh, ought to cause you uh, to pray more. Troubled times ought to cause you to praise more. Troubled times ought to cause you to to proclaim the gospel and the good news and what God has done for you more. David, David, David is uh, uh, at a time in his life when he is literally praying. He is literally praying for his life. His troubled times, his crisis comes by way of a man named Saul. King Saul is now causing him trouble. You, you remember Saul, don't you? Yeah, he, 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 he was Israel's appointed king. But David was God's anointed king. He, uh, uh, Saul, was, Saul was, was the people's choice. David was God's choice, and, 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 and Saul is now, on the occasion of this 27th Psalm, Saul is now causing David trouble. He has put David in a crisis. You know, you know in life, there are things that can put you in a crisis. There are situations that can put you in a crisis. Uh, life can put you in a crisis. Uh, a few months ago, last month, I went to my doctor. I'm doing fine, y'all. Uh, but I, I was immediately put in a crisis. 
He said, you know, we've not done an EKG on you lately, so we're going to do it. And I, they do it right in the doctor's office now. And so this bright young nurse comes in, and she begins to taping all of this stuff to me, you know, checking your heart. And then I hear her say, uh-oh. And immediately I was in a crisis. And I said, what's wrong? She said, oh, the paper is wrong in the print. I said, I said sweetheart, don't do me that. Don't, don't do that to me. Now you're going to have to measure my heart after you didn't. Uh, trust me, it's working. By virtue of your O and I'm still here, it's working. Life can put you the unexpected paper in the EKG machine wrong can put you in a crisis. People can put you in a crisis. And Saul has put David in a crisis. He, David, you read this 27th Psalm this morning. Uh, David is operating in crisis mode. Have you, have you ever had to operate in crisis mode? David is pursued by an enemy. In crisis mode, he has had to send his family away because he's in crisis mode. He's, he, he shipped his parents away in crisis mode. He's slandered by those he thought were his friends. He is in crisis mode. David is now praying for his life. Have you ever had that? No, no, I mean, have you ever felt like you had to pray for your very life? Have you, have you ever had that? What, what do you do when life hits you with a crisis? Where do you go? Or to whom do you turn? Do you go to God? Do you raise your voice in prayer and, and cry out to God? I, I show God, I, Lord, I hope so. But more importantly, how do you, how do you pray in a crisis? Uh, because, because too often, too often, too often, many of us are, are not prepared to pray in a crisis. And may I tell you, uh, your prayer life before the crisis gets you ready for the crisis. Yeah, yeah, too, too often, too often, our, 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 prayer, our prayers are, are cries of panic. David shows us what to do when we've got to operate in crisis mode. David, David turned to God. He raised his voice. He, he takes his eyes, hear me this morning, he takes his eyes off of his situation and, and turns his eyes to God. Do you remember how this psalm begins? Many of us have memorized it, but do you remember how it begins? The Lord is my light. Yes, and myself. The Lord is. Did you hear that? The Lord. The, 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 don't, don't focus on your crisis. Focus on the Lord. Read this psalm. And it shows us, it shows us a David with faith, but a David who is vulnerable. Listen to him. Listen to him. Read it. Even though uh, a whole army has set up camp around me, my heart is still not, I have no fear. Yeah, yeah, look at it, he, uh, he is a man of faith, yes. But here also is a man with a feeling of anxiety, he, 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 his peace has been disturbed. He's got an uneasiness. David turns his face from those who would destroy him and pushes his way. He 
Do you hear that word this morning? Pushes his way to God. Why? Why does the psalmist to seek God's face, seek God's why, you know? D David's God, our, our God can be everywhere all at the same time. Why seek his face? He's a great big God. You know, some people come up with the idea, why do I have to tell God about it? If he knows all, since he knows all, since he knows what I'm going through, he ought to come see about me. Well, let me say this to you. Sometimes, every now and again, God wants us to participate in our blessing. Every now and then, God wants us to participate in our deliverance. God wants us to participate. You're here this morning and your body is infirm. Every now and again, God wants you to participate in your healing. You say, I'm waiting on my miracle. Sometimes God wants us to participate in our miracle. Don't you see it in the New Testament? Jesus puts mud and saliva on the man's eye and said, come participate in this healing. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Don't you hear him saying to that man, pick up your bed and walk. You are here this morning and you're waiting on God. Well, let me tell you, God's waiting on you. He's everywhere, yes. He can be all places at the same time. Why seek his face? Uh, I submit to you that there are times in our lives when we don't really see God, don't feel God's presence. Am, am I the only one who's felt like that? Don't feel his, come on, talk, don't feel like God is around. Uh, we feel like God's really not understanding our problem. We find ourselves saying, God, what you doing? You search the scriptures. There's a man named Job, you remember. He found himself absent, feeling, feeling absent of the presence of God. Uh, he's a hero of the faith, but hear him when he says, uh, oh, oh, that I might know where I might find him, that I might go where he is. Oh, uh, if I go forward, he's not there. If I go backwards, he's not there. If, uh, I, I, I can't perceive him. If I, if I go to the left, they, uh, Job says he hides from me. If I go to the right, I can't see him. And then David in that 42nd Psalm says, as the deer panted after the stream, so is my thirst for God, for the living God. And then he asked this question, where can I find him? Where can I behold his face? My, my tears have been my food day and night. Where can I find him? Uh, all, all, all the while, my, my enemies, are, uh, they keep asking me, where is my God? And then there is, on that fateful day, that Friday, our Lord hangs on the cross, on Calvary. And he raises that, that awful, that, that pitiful, that helpless cry, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In the original language, the, the word order is different. The word order in the, religious, in the original language says, my God, my God, why me hast thou forsaken? Yeah, there are times when, when all of us, no, no matter how much of a Christian you are, how much power 
and influence you think you have, how, how, how close you walk with the Lord. Uh, there comes a time when uh, there's an absence of God. Now, let me tell you, don't, don't, don't let anybody tell you that trouble makes you stronger. If that's the case, some of us ought to be with Hercules. And, huh? Don't anybody tell you that trouble makes you more righteous. Uh, because all trouble doesn't come from God. No, 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 no. There, there are some things in life that come straight from the gates of hell. Sent by Satan himself. The enemy can assault you and it it seems like the very floodgates of hell has broken loose. You know, this, this pandemic is, is causing some people to feel disconnected. You know, they're, they're walking around asking God, why? Why did you allow this to happen? And why did you allow that to happen? Why? Why do some folks survive COVID-19 and other folk die from COVID-19? Why? Why is it now? I got to go buy groceries looking over my shoulder. Why? When I send my child to school, I've got to pray them out in the morning that God will keep them safe. And then when they come back, I got to thank God that they came back safe. And during the day, I got to thank God all day long and pray to God all day long. Why? Why even in the church house? We find ourselves looking at each other funny because we don't know. I repeat, there's some experiences in life that will shake you, shake you, shake you to the very core. And that's why you can't be too judgmental. Just because it's not shaking you and just because that's not been your experience. Be careful. Uh, may I say this morning, be careful how you handle somebody who's going through their troubles. You ought to be compassionate and sympathetic and, and listen more and talk less because the same, maybe not the same, but the kind of trouble, trouble has a way of showing up. And somebody's going to remember how you acted. Say, well, you know, he, he, he didn't show too much sympathy for so-and-so, so, you know, I don't think I need to show any for him. Now, that may not be the godly way. But it's the truth. In the midst of all of this that we have around us, I hear God saying, trust me. Trust me. Yeah, that, that, that's why we've got to keep seeking God's face. That, that's why it's important to be honest with God. Honest with God. Tell God. I'm going to trust you, Lord, but I've got some problems the way things are going on. I, I, I've got some questions I want to ask you. I, I've got some doubts, but I'm going to keep believing that you're going to work this out. The psalmist says to us this morning, read what he says. He says, come, my heart says, seek. There are some things in life you just got to seek God for. So, yeah, 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 I told you last Sunday, I'll tell you again, self-help books. There's some things that self-help books can't give you. I love good advice, but there's some things good advice can't give you. Uh, David is speaking to you this morning, to me this morning, through experience. David gives us direction. David says, come my heart, says, seek God. I know the way it gets hard. But seek God anyhow. Uh, don't feel him? Seek him anyhow. Uh, you might not see him? Seek him anyhow. But uh, yeah, let me also say, 
You may not be feeling him right now, but he feels you. He says to Moses, the children of Israel was in captivity, working as slaves. Moses, tell them, I've seen their oppression. Uh, and I, I will come down. Uh, they've been praying a long time, Moses. Uh, I, I know they thought I didn't hear them, but tell them I'm coming down. Tell him, tell him your troubles. And you will hear him say, I'm still God. Yeah, yeah. When, uh, whenever I feel myself uh, moving and operating under a cloud, I stay long enough to hear God say to me, I'm still God. I'm still in charge. I still rule. Pharaoh has his throne. But praise God, there is another throne that sits higher than Pharaoh's throne. I watched the other evening the uh, January 6th hearings. Uh, not with great optimism, you know. Uh, but then I realized that Above the Capitol Dome, above the Capitol Dome, there is another throne. And from his throne comes justice. And in his court, there is no appeal. Oh, look at it. Jesus, Jesus shows us what it means to seek God's face. He is there in Gethsemane, praying, Lord, take this cup from me. And he says, nevertheless. Huh? Nevertheless. I say this, I, and I bid you good day. I have a dear friend. Some years ago, our daughters were, uh, are the same age. And he lost his wife, died while daughter was four years old. And he tells the story that much of his grief had to be separated from her grief because he had to be strong for her. But he tells the story of one night, he carried her to her bed and knelt down the bed and said the prayers with her and put her to bed. He went on to his room. And he said a few minutes later, he heard a voice from the foot of his bed saying, Daddy, I'm afraid. He says, why are you afraid? She says, because it's dark. And it seems darker than it's ever been before. He said immediately he picked her up put her in the bed with him, turned off the lights, went to sleep. And as he was sleeping, she nudged him and said, Daddy, are you looking at me? It's dark, I can't see your face. Are you looking at me? He said to her, yes, I am looking at you. And she went on to sleep until the next morning. What am I saying to you, my brother? What am I saying to you, my sister? Yes, sometimes the way gets dark. Sometimes it gets darker than it's ever been before. But trust me, his face is toward you. His voice is in your darkest hour. Just ask for his face. See his face. He's got a way of coming. Just when you need him most. In your darkness, just when you need him more. In your heartache, just when you need him more. In your pain, just when you need him most. Broken comes back to put you together just when you need him most. Disappointed shows up to turn your disappointments around just 
when you need him most. Just when I need him. Jesus is near. Just when I falter. Do you believe that this morning? Just when I falter. Just when I fear. Ready to help me. Ready to cheer. He shows up. Just when I need him most. that. Think about that this morning. Him most. Just when I need him most. Jesus is near. The comfort and cheer. brother, my sister, I hope you take that word with you this morning. And if you are here this morning and you are in need of a savior, this is your time. You're here this morning and the Lord has spoken to you. Our church is at prayer this morning, right now, for you. You're here this morning. You need a Savior. You've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. This is your time. You're here this morning. You're looking for a church home. You are here this morning.
Your soul is not anchored in anything eternal. I said eternal. This is your time. Is there one this morning? You've never received the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have a church home. You've never been baptized. You're online viewing. That's all right. Make your commitment right now. We'll find you. Comfort and cheer just when I need him most. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Again, choir, thank you for your music. For your music and your commitment. My brothers and sisters, I thank God for your sacrificial giving to this, your church. We're able to continue to do what we do because you've not missed a beat in what you do. And I, I thank God because some of you have do, are doing more now. And I thank God for it. Let's pray before we go home. Stand, please. Now, Lord, we gather in this place and we have heard from you. And we hear from David telling us to seek your face. In those times when it is darker than it's ever been, we seek your face. Keep us strong. Keep us protected. Set your angels a watch around us. And now, people of God, may the peace of God, the love of his Son, and the abiding presence of the Holy Ghost be with you now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen.